Okay, so uh, let's get started. So welcome to the AFMS seminar today. So it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Abao Misega. Um, he's currently Associate Professor at the University of Politecnica de Catalunya. He received his PhD from UPC in 1998. Then after spending some time at the Oxford University as a EPSARC Research Officer, he returned to UPC. And his in research interests include um, some CFT, transient turbulence, and uh, dynamical system theory. So the title of his talk today is Underlying Subcritical Chaos and uh, Spiral Turbulence in Taylor Quet Flow. So over to you, Alvaro. Thank you very much, Kengo. Uh, it's a pleasure to give this talk uh, in this uh, Australasian Fluid Mechanics uh, Society. Okay, so this is uh, the resulting work. Uh, in collaboration with Kengo from Monash. And the main work has been carried out by Bao Ying Wang and Roger Ayats uh, under the supervision of myself and Fernando Milibowski. And uh, what I'm going to try to, first of all, oh, sorry, uh, I'm going to give you first uh, a little bit of a review of what the Taylor code problem is, okay, because probably some of you are not really familiar with this problem. Uh, then I'm going to describe what kind of numerical techniques uh, we are going to use in order to, to, to address the, the, the kind of, of problems. Uh, and then we are going to focus on the exploration of, of, of exact coherent states that in particular in this case are uh, drifting rotating weights in this geometry. And later on, I'm going to describe uh, what kind of dynamics these rotating waves uh, exhibit, uh, which is in particular in this case, is a, a set of period doubling cascades that lead to relative periodic orbits. And finally, uh, we are going to describe uh, how these periodic orbits after this cascade generate some strange attractors that uh, also exhibit uh, what we call a boundary crisis and at the end, I'm going to summarize all the results. So for those who are not uh, familiar with the Taylor problem, this is essentially uh, the, the, the study of a viscous fluid, which is confined between two coaxial cylinders of radius R, I, and RO, okay? Uh, so basically here, the two cylinders are rotating independently uh, around the common axis with uh, omega I and omega O angular velocities. And from these two quantities, we can obtain two Reynolds numbers, the RO, which is the, the outer Reynolds number, the, the rotation of the outer cylinder, and RI, which is the Reynolds number associated with the inner, with the, with the speed of the inner cylinder. Eta is the radius ratio, okay, that measures the, 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 the gap thickness, okay. And well, probably uh, you have already seen in many fluid mechanics books the kind of patterns that uh, may appear in this in this problem, where apart from the classical circular cross flow, you may have tail vortices, which are these toroidal structures that have a very specific actual periodicity. And if, for example, if you increase the speed of the inner cylinder and you keep the outer cylinder at rest, uh, you may have uh, this uh, wave vortex flow, which are rotating waves in this inertial direction. And if you keep increasing the, the speed of the of the inner cylinder, you eventually obtain this kind of turbulence that still has some some uh, traces of, of of the original Taylor vortices. But the most intriguing structure that has been, uh, I mean, a, a, an open problem in fluid mechanics is the appearance of what we call the spiral, spiral turbulence. This kind of pattern appears in counter rotation when, when the outer cylinder and the inner cylinder have opposite signs in, in angular velocity. And this kind of structure was already pointed out by Richard Feynman already in, in, the, in, the, in the 60s. And uh, actually this is some kind of, of, of pattern that uh, was for the first time computed uh, uh, in, yeah, in 2009. Here you have a, a numerical simulation of, of this spiral turbulence where we are representing vorticity. And here you have a three-dimensional projection. And then if you cut at a constant 
actual coordinate, you have this laminar flow here that coexists with this turbulent pattern that is drifting sinusally at a very, very specific angular speed. So uh, we are basically uh, uh, interested in, in trying to understand the, 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 the origin of this, of this uh, spiral turbulence pattern, okay? And we are going to focus in uh, a very specific uh, region of parameter space. Here on the right, you have the classical, what we call the classical anteric diagram. So in this diagram, as a function of the outer Reynolds number and as a function of the inner Reynolds number in vertical, you have all the type of flows that have been observed experimentally. So in this lower region, you have the circular curve flow, which is basically the, the particle, the fluid particles are moving uh, only simultaneously without actual speed, without radial speed. But above this critical line, you may have different kind of secondary patterns that bifurcate from the basic flow. You may have tail vortex here, you have wavy vortex here, you may have modulated waves here. And spiral turbulence appears in the counter-rotating region, all in this region, okay? And in particular, we are going to focus in within this region of the parameter space. We are going to explore this region of the parameter space. So if this is uh, outer Reynolds number minus 1200 and inner Reynolds number within this, between 360 and 600. And we are going to use uh, uh, the uh, radius ratio, which is not a small gap, which is not narrow gap. We, we could consider that this is a small gap and not real narrow, okay? And uh, our main goals are, are to capture uh, uh, spiral turbulence in optimal domains. Uh, I'm going to talk about this later and to try to identify possible precursors of SPT from a deterministic point of view, okay? This is not a new idea. I mean, uh, this kind of, 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 of oblique bands or oblique turbulent bands uh, also appear in other canonical shear flows like plane coet or plane, plane Poiseuille flow. And it was Barclay and Tuckerman that uh, in 2005 already proposed to capture these kind of structures with, with uh, uh, an oblique orthogonal domain. I don't know if you can identify the boxes here, okay? In order to optimize uh, the computational cost for computing these, these kind of spiral bands. And this is an idea that has been extended uh, to other flows, uh, like uh, for example, in, in, in channel flow, uh, a, very recent, a very recent work by Paranjape, Duque, and Hoff, where they have identified the same kind of stripes uh, in, 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 in channel flow. Basically, what Barclay and Tuckerman proposed was to use a, a, a tilted orthogonal domain, okay, where they captured the, the let's say that uh, these spiral turbulence or, or oblique bands are mm, uh, more or less homogeneous in the direction of the of the oblique angle, okay? And um, what we want to do is to generalize this concept by using a, a more uh, a more flexible domain, okay? That may uh, provide even a more efficient uh, way of, of computing structures at a even less computational cost. So we propose, uh, instead of using a, a tilted orthogonal domain, we, 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 we propose to use this kind of, uh, of uh, parallelogram domain. That uh, this idea comes from uh, uh, De Gucci and Almeyer that uh, use this kind of domains in order to capture uh, spiral structures, uh, where basically uh, you have an oblique uh, coherent state that has two front wave equations, okay? Essentially, you have uh, an asymmetrical and an axial wave number for a, uh, a first wave, and then an, another 
N2 and K2 are uh, uh, and actual wave number. So uh, we wanted to apply this kind of domain in order to capture coherent states within the spiral turbulence. And um, we formulate the problem as always uh, uh, by writing the, the Navier Stokes equation for the perturbation field U, where V B is, is the basic uh, circular cut flow. And uh, we discretize within this uh, parallelogram domain in these new coordinates uh, with a spectral uh, solenoidal method where we essentially expand uh, the perturbation field as a combination of solenoidal functions with some coefficients that uh, are going to be the dynamical uh, degrees of freedom uh, that are, are governed by this dynamical system of amplitudes, okay? So essentially we have a dynamical system which is of very high dimension, but on this dynamical system, we are going to apply all the weaponry uh, that we know from bifurcation theory, dynamical systems, etc. So, the the first thing that we are going to do is to try to to formulate the problem uh, uh, to to capture uh, rotating waves or traveling waves, where essentially these coefficients of the spectral expansion are some constants, okay, uh, times the the two uh, factors coming from the 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 speed of the wave in the xi direction in the, and in the z direction. And once you introduce this in the dynamical system that I showed you before, you obtain an algebraic problem, okay, to find the, the traveling wave. And we are going to characterize our solutions by, as, as, as in many other works, uh, by the inner and outer torque of the solution, okay, which is essentially the, the, the momentum transfer uh, due to the, to the inner and outer walls. And also we are going to characterize uh, these solutions by the normalized kinetic energy of the perturbation. Okay, so this is the classical Hermitian uh, product of the perturbation field, which is normalized by the, by the energy of the basic flow of the basic circular flow. So in this work, we have used different kind of numerical tools. Now on the one hand, we, we integrate in time the Navier-Stokes equation using a fourth order implicit, explicit, or IMX time step up. Uh, to find uh, drifting rotating waves, we use Newton flow solvers, okay, in order to solve this nonlinear algebraic problem. And uh, later on, in order to capture relative periodic orbits that bifurcate from, from these drifting rotating waves, we are using a, a Poincare Newton flow solver. Uh, also, along these rotating waves, we are going to carry out a linear stability analysis in order to predict where the bifurcations are, are going to occur. Okay, this is a, a huge dimensional problem, so we cannot do the classical uh, eigenvalue analysis based on QR or QZ uh, algorithms. We have to use our Noldi Krilov methods in order to identify the, the leading eigenvalues that, that uh, control the bifurcations. So, uh, the, the main idea uh, uh, regarding the parallelogram strategy is uh, we, we have the spiral turbines that has uh, a very specific slope, okay? Um, from this slope, we identify the ratio N1, K1 of, this is one of the two from wave equations, if you want, okay? That we take for simplicity five, okay? And then, uh, we can work on a very thin long domain. And this is a DNS computation on, on this thin domain. And in this thin domain, you can capture already spiral turbulence. So we, we take advantage of the, of, the homogene, of the homogeneous direction, okay? Of, of, of this oblique homogeneous direction. So this is periodic in this, in this, in this two, in this, in this coordinate, but what we are going to do is even to reduce more the, 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 the domain and we just pick a small isimuthal part of this long thin domain in which we are going to try to identify coherent states, okay? 
So basically, what, what is important here is the thickness of this of this uh, of, of this domain. I mean, the 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 length of the asymmetrical length of this domain is 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 one tenth of the of the whole asymmetrical domain. Okay, and K two controls the thickness of the of the domain. So la large, sorry, large K two means uh, thin uh, thinner domains, and small smaller K two means thicker domains. So this is, uh, I mean, to try to find this kind of coherent states uh, is not new. I mean, De Gucci et al. in, in 2014 uh, already identified rotating waves in, in, in the superficial region. So remember in Anderich's under diagram, you have the linear instability of the, of the, of the liquid flow. And these are boundary relaminarization, relaminarization boundaries where Anderich and Coles independently many years apart, found that the spiral turbulence may still active. Okay, so spiral turbulence is here in the supercritical region above the, the critical line, but if you reduce the outer Reynolds, the inner Reynolds number, spiral turbulence still may exist here, according to Andrek, or even here, according to Coase. So, uh, the Gucci already found that in this region you may have uh, coherent structures that may be underlying the, 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 the turbulent dynamics. And actually the subtle notes of these coherent states from the point of view of bifurcation theory uh, were computed to extend even to uh, zero in a Reynolds number, okay? So this is the bifurcation the set of bifurcation diagrams computed by the Gucci in, in 2014, okay, for different outer Reynolds numbers, okay, but we are going to focus in this case. I'm, I must say that these computations were carried out in a on in an orthogonal domain, okay, where uh, the stability of these structures were still to be addressed, okay. So we are going to try to reproduce these 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 uh, coherent states in the uh, tilted domain, in the small tilted domain, and see if we can obtain some coherent structures that have uh, stability of, of uh, instead of, I mean, I mean, typically if, if, if you try to compute uh, or try to find coherent states in orthogonal domains, uh, the kind of structures that you obtain are highly unstable, okay? Uh, in the in our case, uh, we have explored the coherent states for different uh, values of K two for different thickness. I'm going to show you a few bifurcation diagrams. These bifurcations, these bifurcation diagrams are a little bit complicated. So let, let me explain. Uh, essentially, when 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 you increase the inner Reynolds number, you have a first a first bifurcation of the of the of the coit flow, where you may obtain Taylor vortices or of different uh, thickness, okay, uh, that can be connected through a subharmonic uh, bifurcation that we call subharmonic, but it's actually an egg house instability, okay, and then from this from these Taylor vortices you have a hop bifurcation that generates a drifted rotating wave that has uh, solid nodes here, here, and here, but it, uh, th th these structures that appear here are highly unstable. I mean, they cannot sustain dynamics at all. So we explore for other thicknesses, okay? This is K2 equals five, okay? We have also uh, that the, the structure of the bifurcation curves of the solutions is quite sensitive to the, to the change of thickness of the box, okay? So you may have an isolated uh, set of, of, of rotating widths here, okay? Or even here, for example, uh, where you have uh, uh, an isola of drift and rotating waves, okay? Uh, that is also highly unstable. But for uh, K2, this is for 5.1, 5, and 4, but we found that uh, for 4.5, uh, the drifting rotating waves that are generated at this half point, 
okay, are less unstable. And actually, the lower branch of this of this uh, Dritten Rodenti wave only has one uh, unstable eigenvalue. And just right after the southern node, uh, you have a region where this Dritten Rodenti wave is is linearly stable. After, uh, after that, it, it, it exhibits a whole bifurcation. So you have a first pair of complex uh, eigenvalues and then another whole bifurcation and another one. Uh, this upper branch here is already very unstable. Okay, so we are going to focus on this, on this region of, of parameter space. So just to give you a glimpse of, of, of how this, the, the, the solutions look like, I'm going to show you here the the asymmetric velocity distribution of this drifting rotating wave, this other upper branch drifting rotating wave, and the lower branch rotating wave here. Uh, I would like you to focus on point B, which is the structure where you can already see that you have a high speed streak here in the in the in the center. Okay, followed by two inflectional profiles. Okay. So this is something that is going to play a role later on in the, what we call the self-sustained mechanisms that uh, allows for the generation of, of turbulence and sustained turbulence. Okay. So uh, near this region, okay, we are going to, to try to analyze what is the, the, the implications of, 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 what are the implications of this whole bifurcation, okay? Because at this point, you have that the rotating wave, which is essentially it's a rigid structure, which is only traveling and, and drifting actually, uh, generates a, 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 a relative periodic orbit. So that means that the, the rigid structure starts to oscillate. It has a, a frequency, a genuine frequency, okay? So basically, uh, you have the subtle node of the, of the rotating wave here. Uh, if you increase the in the Reynolds number, you have a whole bifurcation here that generates a relative periodic orbit, okay? And these relative periodic orbits are stable uh, at the beginning, okay? So here what you have is phase portrait, uh, inner and outer torque of these relative periodic orbits where you have the uh, the dots are the and the crosses are the upper branch and lower branch uh, torque of the of the drifting rotating wave. So you have uh, the generation of these relative periodic orbits that increase in, in, in amplitude. Okay, and we have uh, fit the the amplitude of these relative periodic orbits uh, in order to confirm that this whole bifurcation is super critical. Okay. So later on, uh, if you monitor these periodic orbits, uh, you see that uh, uh, they generate a Peter Dublin cascade. Okay, that have uh, these periodic orbits uh, when they become unstable, they the only way to capture them is using a Poincaré Newton Krulov method, a PNK method. Okay, and we have monitored where these Peter Dublin bifurcations occur. Okay. And we uh, try to identify or to try to confirm whether this this cascade uh, follows the classical Feigenbaum universality. Here you have the critical Reynolds number at which these periodic orbits uh, appear, and already after uh, uh, five bifurcations, we have uh, a quite good agreement with with the Feigenbaum constant. Okay. So let me show you what happens later. I mean, this, sorry, this period doubling cascade uh, eventually generates uh, the classical uh, chaotic uh, scenario, okay? Uh, so basically you have, at the end of the cascade, you have a strange attractor, okay? Which is a stable, it's an attractor, okay? And, uh, what happens later is that if, 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 if you monitor the, along the string attractor, the dynamics, you can identify visits to the original P1 from which the, the cascade originates, okay? But you can identify visits to 
the P2 orbit, the, 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 the first bifurcated orbit, okay? You have, you, you have a clear uh, recurrence visits to, to these periodic orbits, okay? And this is for this Reynolds number. A, sm a very small increase in this Reynolds number uh, may lead to relaminarization, to trenching chaos, okay? Which is, for example, what I'm showing you here. I must tell you that um, these, these time integrations uh, were carried out for very long time horizons, uh, more than 500 viscous time units in order to confirm permanent or transient chaos. But we, what we observe is that uh, the relaminarization, just, just before the relaminarization, the chaotic attractor seemed to visit an orbit which was not P1 or P2, but seemed to be a P3. I mean, an orbit that has th nearly three times the period of the original P1, okay? So let me, let me clarify this. So this, this P3 orbit is not the classical orbit that uh, you may heard of in, in the classical iterative maps uh, scenarios where uh, Sharkovsky theorems tells you that after period three, you have chaos. In this case, this P3 is completely unrelated to the period Dublin cascade. It's an independent orbit that happens to have the three, nearly three times the period of the original of the original orbit. Okay, um, and actually, this P3 orbit is that is unstable and cannot cannot be found by time stepping because it's unstable has to be of uh, found by, by the Poincaré Newton Krulov method. If you monitor it, you can, you can check that this P3 orbit actually is an independent orbit that, that appears before uh, the, the cascade, okay, and that uh, its origin is at that southern node. Okay, so you have here zoom of the P3 orbit, which uh, takes place or appears uh, after the P2 has been generated. Okay, and that uh, once the, the chaotic attractor has been developed, it collapses with this P3 orbit, okay? So this is what we call a boundary crisis. So you have here for slightly different Reynolds numbers, okay? You have the, how the, the strange attractor approaches more and more to the P3. Okay, mm -hmm. so here we have plot the third iteration map in order to show you how the 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 points of the of the strange attractor in the iteration map approach these three red dots, which correspond to the P3. And as you see, the 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 iterated points of the strange attractor approach the P3, and later on, and I don't know if you can identify this, but this is a point where the strange attractor already crosses the, 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 the straight line. So this is a signature of a boundary crisis. Okay, so essentially the strange attractor collapses with the unstable direction of the, of the one of the unstable directions of the P3 orbit. And then uh, the dynamics is no longer attractive, but it's a, it's a, it's, it's a chaotic salvo, okay? So I'm showing you here phase portraits of the strange attractor right uh, ju just, just before the crisis, okay? And right after, okay? So where you can see that the P3 is actually the, the cause of this relaminarization, okay? This kind of a scenario was already found in, 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 in Lustre et al. in 2019 uh, in Playcoat Club. Okay, so this is not a this is not a new scenario. Or this is something that we already expected. Okay, but what we didn't expect is another thing: is that if if you monitor this P3 orbit by itself, <laughs> it already generates its own cascade. Okay, and this cascade occurs in the region where the P2 originated from the first cascade is still linearly stable. So what you see is here is a, a bifurcation diagram of the, of, of, of the P3 cascade where you have 
P3, P6, and P12. And eventually, the, the chaotic state that it generates, which is also an attractor, okay, collapses with the lower branch of this P3 orbit. So essentially here, we, we, what we have is the coexistence or the nearly uh, coexistence of two periodoblin cascades, okay? And in this case, uh, uh, the lower branch of this P3 orbit collapses with the strange attractor that it generates, okay? And this corresponds to another bifurcation scenario that was identified in 2012 by Kralos and Eckhart, okay, where uh, the period doubling uh, that generated in, in Plinkoid flow uh, collapsed with the lower branch of, of one of the original uh, relative periodic orbits. Uh, I would like to, to, to emphasize that these, I mean, when, 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 when the strange attractor collapses with the, with the P3 orbit and the dynamics become, becomes um, unstable, it escapes to the P2 because the P2 is still stable. So what you observe is that uh, the, the chaotic dynamics uh, escapes from here and falls into P2, okay? Okay, so uh, as a summary, uh, we have identified uh, uh, what we call precursors of uh, spiral turbulence, okay? Uh, using uh, uh, an alternative domain to the one proposed by, by Barclay and Tuckerman. Uh, this, this domain captures, uh, may capture the SPT in long thin domains as you, as, you, as you saw before at a much lower computational cost, okay? Uh, the important thing is that this, these solutions that we have just seen cannot be in general captured in, in, in orthogonal domains or if they can be captured, the the the, the number of unstable uh, the, the 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 number of, of unstable eigenvalues is 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 very is very high. Uh, also, these these uh, the, these solutions are very sensitive to to small changes in, in the thickness of the domain, okay, and in the stability, as we have seen, okay. Uh, but the main point is that we have found stable rotating waves that coexist with the, with the, uh, with the circular cut flow, okay? Uh, and more importantly, uh, that uh, these rotating waves uh, later on generate relative periodic orbits that constitute at the end uh, a strange attractor, a, a stable, uh, chaotic uh, dynamics and uh, that these uh, chaotic dynamics uh, are eventually broken by or they, they, they become unstable through through uh, boundary crisis that uh, may may be of two types in one case the the cascade uh, that generates uh, the strange attractor uh, is, is, is broken by an independent orbit, which is a P3 orbit. And in the other case, uh, the P3 orbit generates its, its, its own period of cascade that uh, also generates another strange attractor that coexists with a stable uh, P2 orbit from the other uh, cascade. And uh, this, this second case also has been observed in, in, in plain, in plain quote flow. So I think that that's all. If, 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 if you have uh, any question, I will be glad to answer. Um, thank you for a uh, stimulating talk, Alvaro. Um, so um, yeah, there are plenty of time to ask a question. So if you have some, um, just unmute yourself. Yeah, uh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Daniel from uh, Universe, University of, uh, of Melbourne. Um, I, I have three small questions. One is whether these structures are related to the near wall cycle in uh, 
uh, just plain type flows like turbulent channel flow. Uh, you mentioned the other studies, uh, that hop study, uh, but I guess are they related or or uh, are, are they very sensitive or very specific to because they look similar, right? On uh, visually, so that that's the first question. And then the second question was also, you know, in stratified flows, uh, these kind of structures, which also kind of look similar, uh, keep appearing. These bands keep appearing. Are, are they related? And then the third small question is: Did you try to also reduce uh, the spectral uh, number of spectral modes? Uh, um, you know, I guess I'm interested in, you know, how few modes, what's the fewest modes required to represent, uh, represent these structures? Sorry, I should show my video. Okay, so uh, regarding, uh, I mean, the, the, I forgot to mention that uh, this, this approach was already addressed, for example, in PyFlow by by Roland, uh, Avila, Melibowski, where they found that the paths that appear in, in, in PyFlow, for example, they actually originate from relative periodic orbits. Uh, I don't know if this is what you were asking in the first question. In the first question, is this, is, is this what, what, what you were asking? Kind of. I was interested in, you know, when, when actually the flow becomes very turbulent as well. Like, uh, I was interested in that very near wall, uh, that near wall uh, structure, whether they're, they're similar to these kinds of structures. Yeah, I, Probably been asked a lot, but I, I wasn't sure of the answer. Yeah, I mean, uh, we, we believe that uh, the role that these, that these structures that we have found is, is the same as the one that, uh, for example, uh, Roland, Avila, and Melibowski found in pipe flow where, where the path in the pipe is actually controlled by these, these underlying uh, coherent structures, or at least within, the, within the, 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 the reduced space, the, the reduced uh, computational space that they worked with. Uh, regarding the stratified flow, I, I, I'm afraid I, I cannot tell you, but uh, because I, 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 I'm, I'm not, I'm not really uh, familiar with the stratified, stratified flow. But for sure, I mean, in in in, in many of the flows, uh, you can identify underlying coherent structures. Uh, the relevance of these uh, coherent structures uh, must be analyzed in each case. Uh, I, 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 I'm, I, I'm not sure if, if this if this can be generalized to all the flows. And regarding the, the, the number of spectral modes, uh, uh, well, we have carried out um, all, all the computations that I showed before uh, have been carried out with uh, different number of spectral modes. And we have uh, stopped uh, at, at, at those values where we cannot identify uh, uh, remarkable change, remarkable changes, either in the in the number in the number of unstable eigenvalues, either in the stability of of the periodic orbits that we found. So uh, I, I haven't mentioned that, but but uh, for example, let me go back to the. So for example, if you want to. To compute this this spiral turbulence in the in, in this huge box, you may need uh, 500 uh, Fourier points here, or 250 Fourier modes in the actual direction, and and nearly the same in the sinus of one, and nearly well 40 in the radial direction. But if you are capable of working with 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 this with this uh, thin domain. The number of, of, of modes that you require in this direction is actually not even 30. Okay, so uh, the computational cost is 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 is, is, is uh, uh, remarkably reduced. And uh, in this small box, the number of asymmetrical modes that you require is even smaller. Okay. But what I'm what I mean is that uh, in all cases that I've shown, uh, we have increased the number of isimuthal uh, and, and, and oblique modes in this direction 
in order to confirm that the dynamics is genuine. I mean, it's not uh, due to a reduction or they are, the, um, what I mean is that they are not spurious uh, solutions, okay? Oh, I was, I was asking for even if you could go even more in the Z direction, like how fewer, can you go fewer modes in the Z direction? Or it's gonna be, it's too much? Well, uh, the thing is that when you, I mean, probably if you reduce the most in the Z direction, uh, probably you will find things, okay? But uh, uh, I'm not sure if you, if you can rely on these things. I mean, you, I mean, uh, our approach is the opposite. I mean, we, we, we try to minimize the number of modes in this direction, but in such a way that if you increase the number of modes in this direction, the dynamics are still is the same, okay? With the same torque and with the same uh, stability properties and so on. And that, and, uh, of course, that the, bifur the, the bifurcation points don't, do, do not change. So the, bifur the bifurcation diagram is not sensitive to this change of modes. Great, thanks. Thanks very much for the talk. Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, thanks, Daniel, for interesting question. Um, yeah, it's interesting to uh, see there's some generic property in shear flow. So, um, but uh, I guess one difference to the uh, Avila's, I mean, pipe flow work is that uh, here the streamlight length is short. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 That's true. Do you think uh, can we do similar for long box, for example, this red box? Okay. So uh, the thing is that as long as you increase the 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 size of the box, uh, the number of unstable directions increases tremendously, and uh, it's hard to find um, coherent states which are stable. I mm. mean, of course, if, if 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 you want to build up a scenario that uh, eventually gives you to some turbulent state. You have to start from, from from something which is stable, and in our experience, uh, increasing the length of the of the sinusoidal I mean the sinusoidal length uh, gives us um, unstable directions. I mean a lot of unstable directions. Actually, one of the purposes of this box was initially to analyze what we call subharmonic, especially subharmonic instabilities or a Benjamin. Uh, fair instabilities. So you replicate the coherent states in this box many times, and you see, or you try to see, if 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 this uh, set of of replicated ways may lead to some kind of localization that eventually uh, leads to this turbulence. We have some DNS uh, simulations that confirm that this uh, this replication leads eventually to this regime. Okay, but uh, the way uh, or the mechanism that leads to the from from the local from the replicated waves to the spiral turbulence is 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 not clear. We have some time stepping simulations, but uh, nothing else. I see. So uh, it's different from pipe flow in this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, in pipe flow, I mean, in, in Roland, Avila, and Melibovsky, they were working with a uh, pipe which was nearly 80, 80 radii long, okay, which is, of course, much, much longer than this, okay. <laughs> okay, uh, any other question? Yeah, uh, let me ask another one. Um, yeah, uh, it's interesting to uh, find the um, P3 has um, uh, played some role in uh, transition. Yeah. Um, I do think, uh, can we better control turbulence somehow through this orbit? For example, uh, if this orbit is uh, responsible for delaminalization, uh, maybe uh, we can come up some economic way to uh, delaminalize tabula somehow? Well, uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, you mean from the from the point of view of of, of, uh, of numerics or from a point of view of, of experimental or applied uh -huh. engineering? Uh, yeah, uh, probably uh, aiming a uh, practical uh, application would be too ambitious, but uh, yeah, uh, maybe. Uh, okay. if, uh, what, 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 the first thing that comes to my mind is, is, is uh, I mean, 
you know that, uh, for example, Bjorn Hoff has been working a lot on on how to control turbulence in pi by by injecting flow in the in the trailing edge of a path that makes it relaminarized. Okay, I don't know if we could somehow to to propose some kind of of mechanism like uh, some forcing with this periodicity in order to 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 kill the spiral turbulence. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if this is uh, the question that you <laughs> that you are raising. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It uh, with abstract uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, but for sure, I mean, if, if if you are able to to, but the thing is that when you force, in this case, you you, you should force the 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 problem with uh, time periodic forcing, mm. and I'm I'm not sure if this time periodic forcing uh, with this period with this P three period would generate another dynamics first. Uh, through some kind of floquet instability, I, I don't know. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, for me, it's complicated to predict what is going to happen when when you force the dynamics with uh, with a P three. Mm. I see. Um, any other question? Just uh, unmute yourself, or maybe you can use the chat. Yeah, uh, I have another uh, comment. Um, yeah, it's interesting to uh, see that um, yeah, you have convergence to Feigenbaum constant, and yeah. it looks to me that the, uh, the yeah this, this map um, the map you presented strongly suggests that the, the dynamics is uh, almost governed by one dimensional map. Yeah. So yeah, if we, if we believe uh, everything happened in one dimensional map on a Poincaré map. Um, maybe one hope it would be uh, to predict uh, this transition by uh, some data at the lower radon number. For example, we may be able to reconstruct one dimensional map from uh, low radon number and extrapolate the map, the behavior of the map in yeah. radon number. Then uh, we may be able to get some uh, eigenbaum cascade in the extra extrapolated map to predict uh, I don't know uh, transition because uh, it looks to me that this very this is very costly computation so yeah. it must be very very hard to um, get convergence to this Feigenbaum's uh, yes the, 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 the thing is that um, uh, in order to identify these these bifurcation points uh, you have to be very accurate with the uh, the, the values at which the, the, the new orbit appears. Uh, one way of doing that is to carry out uh, floquet analysis of the periodic orbits, which is something that we don't have. Uh, these, these values have been obtained from uh, fitting the amplitude of the, of the generated orbits. And with a, I mean, it's, it's a very accurate fitting, okay? But the thing is that in general, uh, finding these values accurately uh, already for this low in Arena's number is already tough. I, I, I cannot imagine how tough could be this in, in an extrapolated region for high Arena's number, probably even more. I don't know. Uh, it's hard, it's hard to say, it's hard to say. Yeah, maybe there are a lot of hard work by the students, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah for sure. No, no, I mean, uh, Bao Ying Wang and Roger Ayat have been really working hard to try to identify these points accurately. Okay. Uh, any other question? Okay, if not, uh, let's thank for the speaker again. Thank you. There's no